Share something? Okay. He doesn't know what he's done by giving me the mic. <laughs> you thought he was long. No, I'm just kidding. First of all, I have to say the song tonight. Um, my heart's desire is for each and every one of us to love the Lord and for us to fall more in love with Him. And so tonight, by taking this time and telling you what the Lord has done for me, I pray that it touches your heart and you realize how incredibly real and alive our Heavenly Father is. Amen. Um, I haven't slept for two years, three years. I have two babies and they keep me up at night. And it's not just one, it's up, down, up, down. For two, <laughs> for two years, longer. And um, I was exhausted, I've been exhausted. I walk around like a zombie half the time. Um, my, I was gone last weekend, my stepmother had given me a call and said, your dad's not doing well. You might wanna consider coming and seeing him. So. My father knows God, once upon a time wanted to be a pastor, so my intention was to go there and re-inform re to him what it is that he already knew. Because he's had a real flippant attitude about God. Him and his wife just, they don't care. God's not an issue, God's not a point in their life at all. And so I've always said that if my mom was to pass, I could deal with that because I know where my mom's going. I'd miss her tremendously, don't get me wrong, I love my mom, but I know where my mom is going and there's, there's comfort in that, there's joy in that, there's peace in that, but when you don't know where a person's going, it's scary. And my father, I, I don't know where he's going. And so we got in a car, gracious, wonderful friend of mine let me borrow her brand new 2014 vehicle so that was Leather. awesome. <laughs> but we drove um, up to South Carolina to spend some time with my father. We got there Friday afternoon. Now the night before, I slept on the floor and up and down like, you know, a normal night at our house. And um, I'm exhausted. So we get there and I... My father was in and out of sleep, and we would go in, and we would sit with him when he was awake, and then we'd walk out, and we'd keep checking, and we'd go sit with him. Friday night, we went to sleep. The kids were in the room with Bailey and I. Bailey and I were in the bed, no sleep, up and down all night long with the two babies. And Saturday came, and um, the kids and I were watching my father and while my stepmother had gone away to go visit her son. So we were um, in and out, in and out, great opportunity to share and have that conversation with my father, but I didn't take that opportunity. And I was okay with that. Um, my aunt, her father was passing away, and she is a godly woman, has raised four godly children there in the ministry, doing awesome work, and she never took that opportunity. She was scared too. So I thought, it's okay for me to be scared. I'm okay with that. You know, somebody will do it for me. If I just say the name of Jesus, it will be taken care of. He'll take care of it. So Saturday night, I went to sleep. Once again, no sleep, up and down, up and down. And Bailey can attest for this because she was in the bed with me. I just started bawling. I just started crying. Lord, I can't take this anymore. I'm exhausted. I am so exhausted, Lord. I don't know what to do. And I am crying, and I'm crying. In our ladies' Bible study, we just heard Hannah. And Hannah was crying and crying for that baby. You know, she just wanted that baby so bad. And so God delivered. God gave her that baby. And I just knew. I was like, God, please, please. In my crying and in my tears, I heard God say, why should I do for you if you haven't done for me? Hmm. So, the next morning I woke up and said, all right, I got to. I got to. So, um, before we left, the kids and I were with me, and we stood there at my father's bed, and I said to my dad, I said, Dad, we love you. We love you so much. And God loves you too, Dad. I said, I don't want you to forget something you already don't know. And I said, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And I said, Dad, that son said, for I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And I said, we love you, and we want you to spend eternity with us. He didn't go into big dissertation or anything like that, 
But I did what I was supposed to do. So I still had an eight hour ride home in a car and I hadn't slept. And I thought, huh, okay, I'm gonna, I, you know, it's a little scary. Do you know that whole ride home, not one time did I feel tired? Do you know that night when we came home, my son for the first time slept for four hours? And do you know that every night since, my son has been sleeping all night long, all my children. Ah. So when we obey, he blesses. So obey, yeah. obey. I love you guys. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Sit, kids, sit, kids, sit, kids, sit, kids. Come here. We got one more. Hold on a second now. All right, it's all right. Crying is good. I'm crying. You cry. We all cry. It's all good. Sorry, Meredith had me crying there for a minute because she's so right. <laughs> How do I start this story? She got me so off track. <laughs> well, our story is a little bit different. My husband wanted a boat, driving me crazy for months about a boat. On and on and on about this boat because he had to give up his motorcycle because of his knees and his back. And I got tired of looking for this boat. I got aggravated, disgusted for this boat. I went home and I put my hands up in the air and I said, God, you know what? If I'm supposed to have this boat, it's on you. The funny part about it is I was praying for a boat, he was praying for a boat, and another gentleman in a coe from another church was praying to sell his boat. But I didn't know this. So I get online and I'm just playing and here comes his boat. Now I had already had two other boats picked out. So in the interim of this, I said, Wayne, I said, come look at this boat. We went there, met the gentleman, we started talking about church. We go for this joy ride on his boat, start talking about church, I'm talking about Moses, I'm talking about our church, he's talking about his church, and we decide we're gonna buy this boat. But in the interim, we wipe ourselves out financially to buy this boat. So the next day, after we buy this boat, what happens? We get a phone call. My daughter, I need $721. All these bills start flowing in and all these things start happening. I says to Wayne, I says, we're in trouble here. I said, we just did a really bad thing. What are we gonna do? I go to bed that night. Now, I always have faith in God. Every time I've asked him for something, he's always come through for me. So I was laid in bed that night. I looked up, I put my hands up and I said, God, I asked you for this boat. I says, this is on, I says, here, it's yours. I says, I can't do this. So I go to bed, I start crying. I says, I'm tired, I'm really, really tired. I can't handle this. I said, Wayne, here's the phone. You talk to Lauren. I can't handle it. I said, God, please, I need your help tonight. I can't take this. Next morning I get up, $7,000 in my checking account. $7,000 in my checking account. Not only did I get to pay off all my bills that I was not able to pay off, everything I paid off, I was able to help my daughter I was able to tie to the church because my first thing before I went to bed was how was I going to give to my church that week? That was my biggest concern. Was, that was the last words I said before I closed my eyes. Was how am I going to pay my church this week? Before I closed my eyes. And that morning I started crying. And my daughter was on the phone. And I started screaming, praise God, praise God, praise God. And she's going, Mama, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why are you crying? She said, did the dog die? <laughs> so that's what she said to me. Did my dog die? And I said, no. I said, you don't know what happened. And I started telling her the story. She said, it's impossible. I said, Lauren, it's not. And I told her how the money had gotten there because it was nothing that we had expected anywhere near this period of time. She said, you got to be kidding. I said, don't worry. The car is going to be paid. I said, and I'm still screaming and crying. Praise God. I mean, this went on for 30 minutes. I'm praising God. I call Wayne up. Wayne's crying on the phone. What happened? I'm gonna coming home. I'm coming home. I said, no, don't come home. I said, you're not gonna believe what happened. He says, I can't believe. It. I says, what do you mean you can't believe it? You know he was gonna come through for us. And sure enough, he came through. If you ever doubt that he will come through for you, don't. Because every time this has happened to me and Wayne, he's come through every single time. 
I have had miracles over and over and over that our father has always come through for me and Wayne. So he's always there for us, always. I'm sorry, Mary, to come here emotional. <laughs> All right, kids, now you can go.